When I was 19 I met a guy in his 40s at university. He told me he was married and had three kids, but his wife was dead, so he wanted to keep us secret until the kids were ready to hear about us. When we'd been together for 18 months, I found out I was pregnant. He freaked out and admitted his wife was not actually dead. Needless to say, we broke up. Then began a custody battle. And when I say battle, I mean battle, as his wife said he could only keep the kid if they got full custody, and I got nothing because she didn't want to deal with me for 18 years. After a lot of bullcrap from the wife they only got visitation every two weeks. Because of her all or nothing mentality, on finding out that her actions had resulted in visitation only, they decided to not be involved at all beyond child support. During the custody case, I met his other kids. His sons both hated me, but his daughter, Kate, who was six months younger than me, felt that her dad was the only one who should get in trouble here. Kate wanted a relationship with her youngest brother, who was still an infant, and who I now had full custody of. I agreed to letting her see her brother, and we actually became pretty good friends, as we were a similar age, with similar interests, and she spent a lot of time with the baby. A few years ago I introduced Kate to a friend of mine, and now they're getting married. My son and I are still a touchy subject with Kate's parents, and Kate says her mum regularly complains about the child support. However, Kate wants her little brother at her wedding, and she and the groom both want me there. The wedding isn't until next summer, and the invites haven't even gone out yet, but she sorted out her guest list, and me and my son, who is now six, are both on it. I've already said we'll be there. Kate's parents have seen the guest list. Her mother has messaged me asking me to not attend. I've refused, and she called me unreasonable, and said I screwed up her family six years ago, she doesn't want any drama or bullcrap egg my son recognizing her husband as his father, which he will be able to do as he's seen pictures, and knows that Kate is his half-sister, or the affair being made known to their wider family. She also doesn't like my friendship with Kate, and has said that she doesn't want to see my face at Kate's wedding, as I've humiliated her enough. My point of view is that Kate has asked me to be there, I'm friends with Kate and her soon-to-be husband, and my son is already excited to go, plus it's not like I'm going to take the microphone and go attention. My six-year-old is the bastard child of the bride's father. Cheers to the bride and groom. Plus, I don't have a problem with them being there, despite the stunts the wife pulled when we were sorting custody, so if they're the ones putting their foot down. I feel they should be the ones to not go. I talked to my roommate about it, and the roommate said that while she's an idiot, I did love her husband, and I'd be bringing his child to the wedding. Am I the idiot for still wanting to go despite Kate's mother telling me not to? If you don't take your butt to that wedding and screw both the husband and the wife. That idiot knew what he was doing, and Hess the one that screwed up. His daughter is right, he should be in trouble, not you. Tell them to kick rocks and blow bubbles. At the end of the day you would be hurting the bride and groom who are your friends. If the wedding is ruined, it'll be due to them being idiots. You better take your cute butt to the wedding, support your friends, and allow karma to take over. If his family finds out he's a cheater, he deserves it. And before I forget, not the idiot. This is something you need to discuss with Kate and her fiancé. Although they want you and your son to attend, it sounds like there is the very real possibility that her dad and mom will cause a scene and upstage the whole wedding. Kate and her fiancé need to decide if they are okay with the wedding potentially being about this family drama and not about their nuptials. Not the idiot. This is Kate's decision. If she ends up disinviting you to appease her mother, try not to be hurt. Otherwise, go if you want and let Kate deal as she prefers. By the way, I have never understood women who blame other women for stealing their men, like these men are inanimate objects that someone just walked off with. I'm from the, if he chooses to be with you, he's all yours school. Okay, so before I get into this I feel like I need to explain my family situation because it's unconventional to say the least. Apologies if this is boring to anyone, feel free to skip the first paragraph if you don't care. In the 80s, my mum married her first husband and had my sister, we'll call her H, who is now 32. They divorced in the early 90s because he was unfaithful, and she met my dad and had me in 96. My dad died shortly after I was born, and in the mid o's she reconnected with her first husband and they got remarried. H and I have never really gotten along. She was always very jealous of me because she didn't like sharing mum's attention and we had very little in common because of the big age gap. 
She was also just pretty mean to me throughout our youth. I chalk most of it up to the fact that, in the eyes of her dad she can do no wrong, and she's basically spoiled rotten by him. Mum didn't like to argue with my stepdad too much so ultimately H always ended up getting her way. An example of her behavior, when I came out, our mum threw a little party for me. H didn't like that she wasn't center of attention and threw a huge tantrum because our mother told her she wasn't allowed to cut the cake. She was 27 at this time. H is getting married in a couple weeks time. Expectedly, she's been something of a bridezilla this entire time. It's gotten progressively worse since the wedding planning has started. It reached a peak last week when she essentially told our mother that she wouldn't be allowed to be in any of the wedding pictures unless she dyed her hair, she recently had highlights put in it, and a family friend made a comment about how nice she looks and how she and H could be mistaken for sisters, and also essentially told me that my partner isn't welcome at all because he has tattoos that are visible when wearing a suit on his hands and neck and she thinks it looks common and uncouth. This wouldn't be an issue at all except her maid of honor also has neck tattoos, and she has no issue with that. Mum was really upset by this, and I was annoyed by what I perceived to be a targeted jab at my boyfriend. I kind of blew up at her, and called her a spoiled brat and a bridezilla, and told her that I didn't want to go to her wedding anyway. She burst into tears, and ran out of the room. Naturally, her father took her side and told me what an absolutely rotten person I am and demanded I apologize to her. I refused and he's been hounding me on it ever since. As mum doesn't like conflict, she's told me to just apologize to put an end to things, but I don't think I should. It's causing a rift in the family, as stepdad is furious with me for upsetting his princess, H is refusing to speak to me, but talking crap about me to anyone who will listen, and mum is kind of caught in the middle. I'm torn on if I ought to do as mum says and apologize for the sake of peace or if I should stick to my guns and refuse. Not the idiot. It was unfair for her to exclude your partner. Sure you may have handled it better we can agree to that. Approach her and explain that excluding your partner hurt you. That you are sorry for what you said and would like to move forward. Get the wedding out of the way, put on a smile and stay out of her way. In the long run it will make your mom's life easier, even if you have to deal with her bullcrap. Her behavior is unacceptable and it's unfair of your parents to not acknowledge her behavior is wrong at all and put it all on you, but I do think you should consider that if you don't make up and attend her wedding, your relationship will probably be damaged forever. If that's something you are fine with that's cool. If not, I'm sorry I called you names, but you were insulting my partner and I felt I had to defend him. I hope I can still be there to celebrate with you, but if you aren't going to include my partner I don't feel I can attend. How would you react if someone insulted your new husband and banned him from events? Leave it on her, and in the moment, if she really doesn't back down she'll be the one who looks bad. I would consider apologizing only to ease the burden on your mother, not because you have actually done anything wrong. If you think you can apologize and just grit your teeth to get through the wedding, it will likely save your mom a great deal of stress, but I can understand if you don't think it is something you are able to do. You are in a difficult position because although you are right, it doesn't really make a difference in this situation. Best of luck with whatever you decide to do. At my work it's not uncommon to bring personal dilemmas to discussion. Unhealthy af, but not the point. I'm a child free 27, my coworker is 32, and his girlfriend is 24, they have been together for 3 years, lived together, and seem to have a fine relationship. Coworker has always wanted to be a dad. He feels like he's on the right age to start having kids, and talked about it with girlfriend. He vents about how she said she's not sure about having kids yet. He makes reasonable money to support a couple of adults, but not to give a child a nice life and I don't know what additional debts he might have. They are not homeowners and his girlfriend never went to college, doesn't intend to, and she makes and sells cake. They are good, but this is her only income, and it's pretty variable. Also, he wants kids, plural. Three or four kids. Said he'd be up to adopting eventually, but wants some bio children. Everyone gave advice I considered horrible and misogynistic, like. You should start trying, she'll start loving being a mother along the way, but what she doesn't. Just take her to see your nephews more frequently, she'll see how amazing it is to have kids, yeah, taking care of a child 24-7 and visiting someone else's kid is exactly the same. 
She says that, because she's too young, of course she wants kids. If she's too young to know how is she old enough to care for another life. The first pregnancy is so good she'll want more kids into time. What the hell, your experiences are not universal. There's no love without giving in, you'll find a way, thanks Captain Obvious, I didn't know you were a couple's counselor now. You should meet halfway and have only two children, that's still having children, damn it. Now, I usually don't take part in those. My co-worker Elle, a woman on her 50s who's really open-minded, always gives advice I agree to, but this time, she only said he should wait a little more to see if she'll change her mind. As a child-free woman, I know that a lot of times I'm not sure is what you say when you're sure you don't want children, so people won't talk crap. It might not be the case, but he still could benefit from a different point of view from everyone else, so, I said something along these lines. If she gets pregnant because she feels pressed, it will likely make her miserable and affect your relationship. If you two want different things in life, it's better to break up while you don't have a child to be affected by it that, or maybe you can consider adapting for her instead. Now everyone looks at me like I advised him to punch his grandmother, because they kids are a blessing, really love each other, and can make it work somehow. I wasn't even harsh, I was very calm and polite. Even if my advice was horrible, which I don't think it was, if he asked everyone, no one should be publicly upset with my advice. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Obviously. It's an opinion. You gave it because he asked. Everyone else is coming from the presupposition that she will want kids, must want kids. And you know what? She might. She's still pretty young, so she still might. But they don't know that. They gave her what I'd call incomplete advice because they were working from the assumption that may be incorrect. You provided a balance to that. What if she never wants to have kids? What if? He needs to hear both sides. Not the idiot, but I think the elephant in the room is that your coworker and his girlfriend are fairly far apart in age. It is unclear if she is interested in kids or not, but at her age it is likely she isn't interested for the next few years. Your coworker is the idiot for trying to convince her to have kids she may not want or may not want now. Also, having three or more kids is being the idiot to the environment. Why is it that when people want good and honest advice, they're taken aback when they get a reality check? He's 32. He didn't want to have kids at 24, so why does he think that his girlfriend would? The resentment and drama that would come with the pressing of the issue, can I just say yikes. Your advice is very sound and a good reality check. But I wouldn't be surprised if his girlfriend would dump him if he starts to pressure her. You're not the idiot. I, 16, I am the only kid from my parents' first relationship. They were 23 when they had me. When I was seven, my mom married my stepfather and they had five kids together, eight, seven, five, three, one. My parents had 50-50 custody, but last year I spent April-July at my dad's only as I was struggling with my schoolwork as my mom and stepdad used me as a free babysitter. When I went to my dad's I had a breakdown and told him I wasn't going back which pissed my mom off as it meant that she had to look after the kids by herself while working as my stepdad had to work in person. Our relationship has been pretty strained since then. I share a room with eight, which comes with difficulties as I don't have my own space. Also she has sleep apnea meaning she snores loudly, no matter what her parents try it doesn't seem to be tamed, so my sleep is really disturbed. Needless to say, I prefer my dad's house. I have my own room and my stepbrother, 17, is nice. My stepmom is cool and spends time doing teen girl stuff with me which I appreciate as my own mom doesn't do that. I spent Christmas Eve with my dad's family and Christmas Day and Boxing Day with my mums. We alternate each year. On Christmas Eve, my dad gave me a snow globe with a photo of my late grandma in it. It was a really cute gift and I put it on my bedside table when I got back to my mums. Unfortunately, on Boxing Day, 8, 7, and 5 were playing a game of football and smashed the snow globe even after I tried to get them to take the game outside. Mum and stepdad were out doing the shopping with the two youngest, so I had to deal with it. After sweeping up, I scolded the kids and told them you didn't listen to my instructions, football is an outside game and now you broke something precious to me and because of that you need to pay for the consequences. I took a fiver off each of them so I could get a new snow globe. While they were upset they seemed to understand and apologized. 
while I packed up my bags and got ready to go early to my dad's house. My mom was livid at me for taking money off my siblings, but when I offered to give the money back and she pay she refused. Now my mom's week is beginning and I'm refusing to go. She turned up at my dad's house and started begging as school is going online again and she can't risk her job with the kids at home. I told her I can't risk my levels. She said that she misses her relationship with me, how we were close once, and what went wrong. I said what went wrong, five times you forgot to wear a rubber and made me deal with the consequences. I have no space, no sleep as your child snores like a truck and I am used as a babysitter, even when it impacts my own education. My stepmom who was the only other person home tried to deal with it, but my mom called her a manipulative idiot for stealing her daughter. My stepmom closed the door, but told me I need to be more polite to my mother as she must be stressed with all the kids, but says she understands my position. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Making a child take on parental duties is called parentification and is considered a form of abuse. Your mother and stepfather chose to have five children and you deserve to be able to concentrate on your education, not playing parent to your step-siblings. Honestly, if you don't get out now, I'll bet the demands on you to stay will continue, for you to put off college for a few years to help with the kids, etc. Your mother only has her own convenience in mind, she does not care for your welfare. If she did, she would not be making you into the third parent. You do not have any children, and so it's not your job to care for children, especially because it's not a paid position. Also, at your age, I completely understand that you feel the need to have your own room so that you have space to work and relax all alone when you need it. Your mom might be in trouble, however, it's not your problem. I do agree that you could have been more polite to your mom, but at the same time I get that you were so fed up all your frustrations came out at that moment. Not the idiot, you are a child yourself you aren't supposed to contribute money to the family. You didn't have five kids with no way to take care of them. You shouldn't have been forced into that situation to begin with. Since you're 16 I don't know what your parent co-parenting agreement is but if your mom tries to enforce a custody agreement let her know that you aren't going since 16 is old enough to make that decision. If she threatens to take your dad to court let her know that even if she had a good case it would be possibly a year or more till she can even get into court by which point you are going to be even closer to being 18.